Hey folks, um, today space trusses. So this is just a 3D version of the plane trusses that we've been working on. So here's your plane truss, your 2D triangle. That's your most basic truss with the uh, joints being pins. All right, so you have two equations um, of constraint there. For a space truss, uh, you have the analogous situation. So you see the basal plane here in the shaded area and then with A, B, and C in that plane. And now you have a three-dimensional figure um, instead of um, your two-dimensional in a plane. This A, B, C, and this D. These are now ball and socket joints. which are analogous to the pin joints because they don't provide um, resistance to a moment. They don't provide, re provide a reaction to a moment, um, but they'll provide force um, in all three directions. All right, so this is the basic non-collapsible unit of the 3D truss system, just like the triangle was in the 2D truss system. So um, here's what that looks like. And as you build on it, the bottom picture here shows you building on it just like we did with the triangles. So you add more, um, you add more bars to it and create more um, tetrahedrons. And that's your basic structure. You keep making more and more of these basic tetrahedrons. Um, until the extent that you need for your particular structure. Um, as with plane trusses, a lot of the similar um, assumptions, um, we can assume, assume two force members. Um, if the center lines of the joined members intersect at a point, and um, to determine if they're statically determinant. Okay, same process, only now we're, we're um, doing three dimensions. So we're still gonna have J defined as the number of joints. Um, and for each joint, equilibrium is specified by three equations. Um, so the number of equations equals 3j. All right. So then just like in the 2D, m is the number of members. So for a space truss in, in 3D, um, your equation for um, determinancy is the number of members plus six equals three J. All right, so this is the number of members. This is the reactions at the two at the supports and um, this is um, the equations at joints so um, this is this is a necessary but not sufficient condition for stability. 
Okay, depending on the design, you can have this condition met, but um, it still may not have stability. So if, now, if the truss has, comes in this way with the equation, m plus six greater than three j, keep wanting to make the little hat there, get rid of that, this is just a variable j, not a unit vector. Um, if it's greater than it, um, since it has more than the minimum number of members that will be required for stability, um, the truss is statically indeterminate. All right, so this is the statically indeterminate case. All right, not enough equations. Not enough equations to solve for all the unknowns. Alternatively, if m plus 6 is less than 3j, then the truss has too few members. is unstable and subject to collapse. Okay, so um, the geometry of 3D trusses is a lot more complicated to visualize than plane trusses. So um, in the design process, um, these equations can be um, more helpful than they were. We didn't use them much in, the, in plane trusses because you could sort of see what was going on um, more readily. But for, for these, keep in mind that um, these equations can be helpful. All right, so there's no new uh, methods uh, for space trusses. We're um, using take the use the method of, of joints just extend it to three D. Some of the forces vector vectorially equals zero for each joint. Okay. And um, just like with just like with the plane trusses start at a joint where you have at least one known force and um, and not more than than three unknowns, right? Because you can you have the potential to have three equations, one in each dimension. So you have the potential to deal with three unknowns, but not more than that. Um, if you have computer a computer available to solve these, you can just set up the equations, have the computer do simultaneous equations. Um, that's probably the way these things are handled um, in, in the structural world. Um, method of sections. It's really, again, the same thing. So now we're doing some of the forces and uh, some of the moments vectorially all three dimensions for um, all sections that you're investigating. So these, remember, these are vector equations. 
So they equal six scalar equations, three each. Three dimensions. Um, just a, a note on the sections. So when you take a section, that section cut should not pass through more than six members with unknown forces. Right? For exactly this reason. Okay, you're not going to have the equations to deal with it. Uh, and as you remember from when we did um, 3D moments, 3D structures in the last chapter, things get much trickier when you go in three dimensions, when you talk about moments. In 2D, um, you only had two ways a moment could be, clockwise or counterclockwise. Once you put in that third dimension, you have an infinite number of dimensions. Right, so um, it's more difficult than in plane trusses because it's difficult to find the moment axis. In 3D, that eliminates all but one unknown. So um, that becomes, that's trickier. But I mean, sometimes it's still a good technique. You still have it in your pocket, but understand it's going to be more difficult. All right. Okay, that's it for the introduction. I'm going to do one more of these where um, I set you up with, a, with an example. All right. Bye for now.